I'd like now to uh, introduce our, our, our last, um, but not least, speaker, Daniel Perel. Uh, he's a uh, United Nations uh, representative um, of the Baha'i international community. Um, uh, I have myself uh, had the chance to, to, uh, uh, to work with the Special Rapporteur on Freedom of uh, Religion, and, and we did interact uh, a lot with the, the Baha'i office, who's um, been amazing in, uh, in its contribution to uh, the work on human rights, not only on freedom of religion, but many other issues. Um, and, and we're very grateful for that. Uh, Daniel is going to talk to us uh, today about uh, freedom of, of worship. You have the floor, Daniel. Uh, thank you very much. I must say my name never sounded as beautiful as when you just read it out, so I, I really appreciate that. Um, and thank you for the kind introduction as well. So um, I would like to speak today about uh, one of the, the root causes or one of the solutions to, to uh, many of these issues that we've seen before us today. But before getting started, I do want to thank uh, DPI, as well as all my prior speakers and singers as well. Um, but I, I have been asked to speak on the uh, freedom of worship, which was one of the four freedoms mentioned by Franklin Roosevelt in 1941. Um, and in the time I have, I'd like to focus on three issues in particular. The first is that we have to expand what freedom of worship means. Uh, and the second is that this freedom is really what, what makes human beings human. And the third is that protecting this freedom is central to achieving the kind of world we all wish to see, and in fact addressing the very concerns that we've been hearing about uh, this morning. So regarding the first point, uh, discourse around the issue of freedom of worship can oftentimes be quite narrow. If it focuses on what garb people can wear or what buildings they can go to on certain days for prayer, it, it could remain so narrow. But the freedom of worship at its essence is far richer than this. Uh, at its heart, it's ultimately an expression of the freedom to investigate truth and reality for oneself. Enjoying the freedom of worship means having the opportunity to investigate without prejudice, bias, fear, or harassment, the deepest questions of self and society. So who am I? What is my purpose? What are my responsibilities to others? How can our collective welfare be best pursued? Can we imagine what kind of world we would be living in if we didn't have the freedom to explore these realities for ourselves? What would our individual paths of personal development and fulfillment look like? How would our collective journey toward a better world be impacted? Could it possibly advance? On to the second point, which is that this capacity and longing to search for truth, wherever it may be found, is intrinsic to the human spirit itself. Freedom of worship speaks to the most fundamental aspects of what it means to be a human being. As my organization, the Baha'i International Community, once wrote, quote, the activity most intimately linked to the consciousness that distinguishes human nature is the individual's exploration of reality for him or herself, the freedom to investigate the purpose of existence and to develop the endowments of human nature that make it achievable requires protection. Human beings must be free to know. In practical terms, this means that the freedom of, of worship or religion encompasses a wide range of activity and endeavor. It includes the freedom to worship as one sees fit, as I mentioned before, and the freedom to not worship. The freedom to seek and engage new systems of meaning and purpose and activity, and the freedom to define by what terms one would like to live one's life. And as we are unfortunately seeing today, Denial of these freedoms of worship can do great damage, particularly in terms of enjoyment of the freedom from fear or the freedom of speech. It is for these reasons I'm convinced that studies show that greater religious freedom and greater religious diversity are correlated with peaceful societies. The Institute for Economics and Peace, for example, recently noted that, quote, countries with greater religious freedoms are generally more peaceful, whereas countries with less religious freedom are generally less peaceful. When one is free to explore the nature of reality in his or her own way, and importantly, when one sees how others and that others are doing the same, we begin to see the strength uh, that lies behind our diversity. And as this happens, the idea of committing terrible acts unto another in the name of belief or race, creed, social class, what have you, that diminishes. And this brings me to my third point. In this sense, freedom of worship, understood as the freedom to investigate the full range of human existence, stands not just as a right, but also as a means to explore, understand more fully and actively 
address the many challenges and opportunities facing humanity today. As someone born and raised in a Jewish family, I certainly benefited from this freedom, and after great personal exploration, I became a Baha'i. <clears throat> now, as a representative of the Baha'i faith, I could provide <clears throat> excuse me, all too many examples of what it means at a very practical level to have freedoms denied on the basis of religion. But what may be more important than that is how active exploration of one's higher nature and of human purpose as a whole allows one to respond in ways that are constructive and productive, regardless of circumstances. This is how we can all move forward, even in the, great, in the face of great challenges. To many around the world, religion and the freedom of worship can inspire souls to build unity, to endeavor for material and spiritual betterment of all, to see their own happiness and that of others, as we just saw in that video, to advance learning and science, to be an instrument of true joy, and to revive the body of humankind. It can offer an understanding of human existence that lifts the eye from the rocky path to the distant horizon. And when true to the spirit of its transcendent founders, it has been one of the most powerful forces for the creation of new and beneficial patterns of individual and collective life. So I would posit that the next stages of freedom of worship will lead us to investigate more deeply the link between religious conviction and service to the common good. So this afternoon, I've tried to shed at least a little light on three central premises, that freedom of worship is much larger and, and more profound than just the act of worship, that is central to what it means to be human, and that it is also central to efforts to better society. And the last point I would like to make involves the relationship between freedoms of various kinds and the ongoing advancement of human civilization. In the 1941 State of the Union Address, then President of the United States, Franklin Roosevelt, spoke of a world founded upon four essential freedoms. These, of course, are the very freedoms we are exploring here today, and it is clear that 75 years later, we as a global community still find them to be of great importance. It is perhaps worth remembering, though, that these freedoms were articulated not in the abstract and not as standalone self-contained concepts. They were framed within the context of the moral order in relation to the concept of the good society. And importantly, in 1941, they were articulated during a world war whose legacy could very well be identified as the ultimate result of the lack of freedom of worship. This seems to get to the heart of why freedom of religion is more important in the contemporary world. Religion pertains to our deepest beliefs, values, and convictions about ourselves, our role in the world, and the way our collective life should be ordered and arranged. In this sense, it is central to our collective striving after the good society. And this striving to understand what we can be at our best, both individually and collectively, is something that must be preserved and protected if humanity is to advance. So thank you again.